Good morning and welcome to our Sunday school class. We hope everyone is having a great morning so far. Um, it's that time of month again to where we talk about the different prophecies that led that in the old that the Old Testament talked about um, Jesus' birth. And so we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, I found some pretty interesting things and a lot of times we um, talk about the prophet Isaiah who has a lot of prophecies in his in his book and um, then when I was studying there's some other ones also that mention um, the prophecies of Christ and so we should go ahead and look at those um, let's go to Genesis I know right Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed that shall bruise thy heel and thou shalt bruise his head. Wait, I'll keep going her. Wait, was that right? You said bruise thy head and thy shoulder. Right? Um, Does that do that opposite? 15? Bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel? I Technically it is. Okay, okay. Just make sure. No, it's fine. No, you're fine. I was just like, wait, what just happened? It's very but, much, um, It's very ambiguous. Yeah. But reading this was reading this scripture and uh, studying some things about it, it was talking about Satan being defeated. And uh, as we all really know that once Jesus was born and it, he lived out his life and then died on the cross for us, then this is when Satan is really starting to tremble in his chanclas. Yeah. Sandals. I don't know what he wears. Snake feet. Whatever it is, whatever it may be, but um because then we have a remission for our sins. We have someone we can go to and repent and be cleansed from all the um, wrong things that we've done. So, Genesis was already prophesied. It was already, you know, um, coming. And then, let's see. Genesis 12 and 3. I know there's some in Genesis. I was just, yeah. This is talking about um I it no. talking about his lineage. Look, kind of. And I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee, and then these shall all families of the earth be blessed. Let's talk about Abraham. Yeah, I mean, no, it, that's not really. Yeah, I mean, like, all families of the earth. Jesus is included in that, so. Well, it's just yeah. the, the lineage. Let's look at numbers. Yeah, there's some in numbers, too. Um, It was just really talking about his lineage, like where where he would come from. Wait, 49, sorry, go back to Genesis 49, 10 real quick. Oh, uh, yeah, this one is Okay. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Okay, and then Numbers... 24, 17 says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter. Scepter. Scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Okay, so. It's spelled Skeptry, by the way. It's Skeptry? It's not. It's, not, it's, not Skep -tree? It's, it's Scepter, but it's spelled Skeptry. Oh. That's weird. I've never seen something um, like And so it was just talking about the whole, like, some of the lineage and stuff where Christ would come from. Damon. Yeah. Jacob. Sorry, let's talk about the star of Jacob here. Okay, and then, 
Um, Second Samuel. Right. Seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. And, and, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. You should build a, you should build a house for my name, and I will establish the Oh, sorry. I didn't. Oh, no, it's fine. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And this was also talking about Christ. <laughs> and then it goes right into, if he, oh, I will chase it with the rod of men, and I will strike the tongue of men. Oh, that's the same thing. No, it's just still one. Yeah. I'll be his father, and he will, shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will ch chase him with the rod of men, and with the strike of children of men. Mm -hmm. My mercy shall not depart away from him. No, that's just David, isn't it? Yeah, it is. As... I took it from Saul, whom I put a little before you. Yeah. Yeah. But that was those. Let's go to some other ones that, like, those are just ones that we don't typically talk about. Yeah. But they're there. Okay, so now we're going to go to some that are talked about. And, um, for instance, we're going to go to Isaiah. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's, you know, it is yeah, something about Isaiah um, and different chapters of his book talk about the birth of Jesus and 7 and 14 I didn't miss you, so I didn't miss you. Yes, you went with me past the this is why my name is B. Chancellor, because I've flipped past the money in your house. I know the books in the Bible. But those pages are so small, too. True. 7 and 14. 14. All right. Yes. <clears throat> oh, the classic. Yes. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. I didn't know it was spelled that way. Yes, um, it's with an I, not with an E. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Emmanuel, butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know how to refuse, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. <laughs> Lord, the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Land, thou horse shall be forsaken of both her kings. I think that's a, that's different than what we did. <laughs> yeah, no one ever continues after Emmanuel. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop there. Hey, listen, uh, you could tell he, he enjoyed people from the south when he's eating butter and honey and choosing the good, because that is amazing. <laughs> just yeah, like, all you eat is good. butter and honey, and you know good and, 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 and uh, refuse evil when you're just eating butter and honey. Right. Well, okay, so this Isaiah is, um, as we know, the birth of Jesus. His mother, Mary, um, was engaged to Joseph, but they were not yet married, and she was a pure woman. And... Uh, but she would, she would have a baby. Isaiah prophesied this before it actually happened. And um, there's a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament, not just concerning Christ's birth, but also his his death and um, <clears throat> the different things that were prophesied in the Old Testament. Um, were were seen in the New Testament. Um, and so that was about how he was going to be born. It's sending me to Matthew, which <laughs> I don't know why this is. of Jesus then. Well, Jesus died. It's probably himself talking about how he's going to Oh, okay. Matthew 1. No, no, it's not. no, it's not. Now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth the son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Did he spell it with an E? He spelled it Matthew spelled it with an E. Right, Old so Testament he, he Emmanuel Old Testament Emmanuel is spelled with an I. New Testament Emmanuel is spelled with an E and then it gives you the definition meaning yeah. meaning God with us. Which I don't know what the difference is. He probably, made, the he probably made a he probably made a mistake. He wrote it down wrong and uh you know, said it's E but it's actually I. 
<laughs> you need a spell check. No, no, no. But um, also, I've never, I've never ever seen it with an eye, like in my life. Nobody spells it with an eye. I mean, ever. It's only an eye in Isaiah. And that's the one where that's it comes from. Why, no, that's why. No. But that's what that's a, where it's originally from. It, I mean, yeah. They, I like that they included the callback here. You know, that's not his his thing. It just feel like this is also a prophecy of those. Yeah. Referring to him. Now earlier we we're talking about the lineage of Christ. Well, Matthew chapter one, verses one all the way to seventeen gives you his the whole generation of him. It's like a mini first chronicles. Yes. It tells you where all like it started from the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham got Isaac, Jacob. Jake, I mean, I mean, it just goes, 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 yeah. and then. I always felt um, like First Chronicles is where they were like they accidentally included like some like, uh, you know, just like whatever the the guys are called, right? just uh, take track of the people, the census takers. They accidentally included some of that in there, <laughs> where they he wrote it down in the same book or whatever. I read down all the stories and stuff at the end, but like he had uh, he had been taken census or whatever before that, and they accidentally left all that in. He began him, and then it just. From there. Well, in the Old Testament, it mentioned um, about David, and this is where it's from. So, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon to Christ are 14 generations. Hmm. Now, the, what's that? now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when his, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. She was now. Um, the child of the Holy Ghost. I think that's why they look at Luke chapter 2. Because it took, I mean, it has some in here. But while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the and Joseph, our son of David. Matthew, Joseph is Matthew, from the late. He, he had a problem with spelling, I think. I don't know. Because in verse 7, it said, And Solomon begat Roboam. <laughs> it was it Roboam? It was Rehoboam, right? No, it's Roboam. What? It's Rehoboam. That's here, but like in the Bible, is that a Rehoboam or no? I don't think so. I don't know. He said Boaz with the two O's, which is just booze. Well, and seven we got, what do you, there's no Boaz, so. Would it be and further some, down? I don't think so, because right after that is David. Oh. Some would be got booze Bose. of Rashab and booze. Obed of Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot David, the king. Yeah, so and king the David begot Solomon. Poor Matthew. He's oh, a good tax collector, but a terrible spelling. I have no idea. And so that shows where it all started from. And then... And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was born Jesus, who was called Christ. And the thing we got Jacob, Matthew. So if you want to see like just a quick um, little thing about the generation of Jesus, go and um, read Matthew chapter one, and it'll give you it'll tell you all the names. List? There was a different list of genealogies too, wasn't there? Um, it, was, it was the difference between Marys and and, and Joseph's. Maybe. We're going on a lot of side trains because Lainey's not here, so we uh, have to fill in time. <laughs> no, we're just we're just really like looking, paying attention to who. Like yeah. when you look at the generations of Jesus, you're going to see people that. Oh yeah. You're yeah. going to see names that you recognize. Jotham, Jordan. Jotham, um, Isaac, and Jacob, and um, Obed, and Jesse. Um, that's different. I'm I'm gonna have to look at that again. Which the um, bows? Oh yeah. Manassas. Yeah. Um, it's probably um Elijah. Jehoshaphat and Elijah yeah. is in there. Asa. Asa, which those are the tribes. Those are some of the. Those are the tribe names. Dude, that was the king. Uh, under, like it was a little further than that. 
Okay. That he was uh, the king, and then he had Jehoshaphat, and, and Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat was Joram. Joram, and, Joram and that's when they, that's when they stopped talking about the kings right there. And so okay. And all that happens, I think, because as far as they still talked about it, but I think that's yeah. when, in, as far as kings and chronicles go, yeah. that's when they kind of stopped. The, he has there's some pretty famous people in his um, his lineage, his gener in the generation of Jesus, and then there's some that aren't mentioned in here. Oh sure, yeah. And like um there is and I don't know exactly when this is but there's somewhere where it's where it talks it more yes yeah. but instead of Joseph it's through Mary I don't remember exactly where that is it's John but I don't think so right? no, it I don't think so unless it's, it's in the middle of the book which could confuse me but. but there's more there's more to his generation okay. it's just a little bit of um of that um Let's go to Isaiah 9, what is that time again? Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. And it says, this is the prophecy. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. There, um, there's a poster and it says um, the names of Jesus and wonderful count, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace are all on that poster and it's just describing It's just describing him. It's just other yeah. other names that you can give Jesus to describe. As a, yeah. Yes, as a, describing him like counselor, you can go back and look where he's sitting with his prophets. He's sitting with his prophets, and he's giving them advice about things. He's and not only giving them advice, but preparing them for what was about to happen to him. Um, also, what a weird thing to say as far as the government should be upon his shoulder. You know, it made a lot of sense why people thought that he would try to, you know, free Israel from the Romans. Because it always felt like that was going to be, oh, he's going to be in a governmental thing where he's yeah. going to do it, the, you know, the legal way or whatever. You know, he'll take over and then he'll be a king because, you know, this is what they said. But in reality, it was a totally different meaning yeah. to that. Where it was the government would be on his shoulder just because he was he was the ruler over everything. Okay. Which makes sense when they said when they put it like that. Right. But in you know, foreshadowing now we're like, Oh yeah, of course but then they were all like, yes. Wait a second, what is he doing? He's dying? Oh well, that's not right. Right. <laughs> He's dying because the government did it? Oh well that's not good, you know. <laughs> okay, then um Isaiah again is talking about the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Where's that one? 11 and 1. Oh. It's just talking about the seed of Jesse. And then, 2 Samuel, I know that's going to jump real quick. Wait, we're going back. It's a weird jump. Yeah, 2 Samuel? Yeah, 2 Samuel 7, 12, 16. Right there. Let's see. Um, it's the same thing. It is. It's just saying the same thing. Oh, uh, you should have the house my name. Uh, not really. No, it's it's what I already read. Oh, okay. I just read the first verse and then they get the second one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Oh, I did it on that side. That's why. That's why I was... No, yeah. Okay. Um, that was just talking about him, him being the seed of Jesse. Then Malachi... I know... Malachi 3 and 1. These are just different prophecies in the Old Testament, really. 3 and 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come out of the come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who shall abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. 
And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Um, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, it is. So this was, um, when reading it, it was talking, this is the messengers of Christ is what it says on top of my Bible. God's promises, of God's promise of blessing. John the Baptist. So this, yes, I was going to say, this was actually talking about Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. Because he was the one that was chosen to prepare the way for Christ. So, it's talking of, John the Baptist is mentioned in the Old Testament without his name actually being mentioned. Because when you go back to the New Testament, you know, he's, he's said prepare the way. And that's what John the Baptist did. Um, so it mentions his cousin and what he was going to do for Christ, for his for his cousin. You know, when you say cousin, it sounds kind of funny yeah, because they were cousins. Keep it in the family. That's what, you know, I was yeah, saying. they were cousins, really. And um, so that was that. Then it was numbers. Okay. Numbers 24, 17. We're going back again. This is talking about... Of course, Bible. I said 24. Um, the star. This is um, talking about oh, the yeah. star. Uh, what, what, what's that, 24? 24 and 17. It's the same thing. It's, it's the same. Oh, it's the same one as the other one. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. Well, how did I do that? I wrote down the scriptures twice. Shall rise out of a sceptre. Yes, I did. Shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy all the children of Israel. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy all the children of Israel. Yes, I wrote down the scriptures twice, so we're reading them twice. Um, we did Micah, right? Micah five and two. No, 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 we did Malachi. Okay, that was Malachi. Okay, Micah five and two. Micah 5 and 2 says but thou Bethlehem but thou Bethlehem Ephrathah though thou be little among the thousands of Judah yet out of thee shall he come forth unto men that is to be ruler of Israel whose goings whose goings Goings forth have been from old, of old, from everlasting. Two. Therefore will he give them up until that the time that she would travel hath brought forth. Then the remnant, remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Wait a second. What? That thing is wrong. That I feel well did that. That the messengers at all. Remember that thing that in the Christmas play that we used to listen to? He's like, I don't know, they shall come and go, and they will rule my people with your bed. That's not even the same yeah, at all. That's not it. Well, that's that is to be ruler in Israel who's going for a Well, that's Maybe it's a different verse. Yeah, I, thought it, I thought it said Micah. And it's talking about him, where was Jesus born at? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. So, this is yeah. Micah, it is prophesying where um, he's going to be born from, really. And then, um, I, back to Isaiah. <laughs> back to Isaiah. It tells you. Of course, it's back to Isaiah. Yes, it is back to Isaiah. Because Isaiah has a lot oh, of. Oh, I don't know. Um, Isaiah 53 itself talks about the sufferings that Jesus was going to have. It's a lot of verses. It is. It's it's, a whole chapter, isn't it? Yeah, the whole chapter. 53 oh, chapter. It's only 11 verses, but they're paragraphs. They, they're like, yeah. But um, it was just only doing, it was True. saying how low they, they thought he was 
You will. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. And he was despised and we esteemed him not. Still to this day, some people still don't. And it's mm -hmm. sad, but we just have to pray for them that their eyes would be open to see that it wasn't just a particular group that he died for. It was for them also. And so this 53 was just talking about what was going to happen to Jesus. You can read it. It's uh, Isaiah 53. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a whole, ch it's a long it, chapter. Yeah. We're going to run out of time. It'll take us um, like 10 minutes just to read that. Right. But probably these next, oh, what, one Sunday? Oh, I should have started this early. Oh, yeah. Because next Sunday is well, the 18th. Yeah, and then and Saturday is, is... The day after Christmas. Yeah. Yes. But I, ha I still have a little bit of time. I wanted to talk a little bit about Mary. Um, As I was studying her, as I closed on the prophecies in the Old Testament should about Jesus' birth. Should we just do the, the actual Christmas thing, like the, the day after Christmas? Like Sunday after Christmas? We did that. Yeah, we, we, just, we just started off. Close enough to Christmas. Yeah. Um, Mary, I was just, you know, reading and studying about her, the mother of Jesus. And um, it was pretty interesting on some things about how, what some people believed about her and um, how they were taught about who she was, we, as the scriptures tell us about, the little bit that they tell us about Mary, we saw that she was very humble um, and that with that, her being humble, she also had what do they call it? Blind obedience. I was like, blind obedience? <laughs> what is even that? I was like, I what know, is I that? I know a lot of people who have that. <laughs> well, but with Mary, it's different when you say blind obedience. True. Because she... That's how most dictatorships get started, by the way. Oh, goodness. Because with Mary, she did exactly what she was supposed to do without really knowing what was what was going to happen. And then she had lively faith. She believed that the child that she was carrying was going to save the world without even knowing what the whole process was going to be. And this is Mary, the mother of Jesus we're talking about. Um, and then at and one part of scripture it says and she pondered these things in her heart and I was like what is that really what is that really talking about it said in, so reading about it it said that she kept the, she kept the, the things that Jesus did in her heart so she could remember what he had done forever she, it was, she was silent about the things. Well, so I, uh, me and Lainey read these uh, books, and they were called Mac, the Maxim Liz series. And basically, uh, they're by Jenny L. Cody. They were really interesting because they had a very interesting take on a lot of things. It, it's historical fiction-ish as far as it's, uh, it's the Bible, but from the perspective of these immortal animals who kind of go through and, and are seeing all this and sometimes take part in it as far as like having events happen. And uh, the, it starts with Maximus, but then it goes on to be the uh, Order of the Seven, or Magnificent Order of the Seven, something like that. Um, but that their t her take on that, uh, with the pondering the things in her heart, is that she kept a journal. And, uh, and, and because she stayed with, uh, the, what's his name? Uh, yes. He, he had to write to talk. He couldn't hear. So, because of that, then she learned how to write through that, which she probably did. Yeah. You know, uh, is is to communicate, and then eventually, then she would make a journal and write. Just write. You know, that's what pondering these things. She would write down everything about it. Yeah. And then, um, that's how in in the books. Again, this is not this is not real. It's most of it is is fiction. It's what people think. Right. Like biblical people, fiction. Yeah. But uh, but then that was how Jesus found out who he was. 
where in between him being 12 or whatever and then going to the temple and when he was uh, young, Before. that's when he he read that and found out who he was and then that's when God revealed himself and he, you know, he started to, he, he realized who, who he was and then God came into him as, as a boy. So that's that's what that says and, and the, their books are great. Um, they, they have a really interesting you know, perspective on a lot of the biblical stuff. They also have some some of the history in it uh, coming in. You know, where it's it's more American history rather than only biblical history. But there, it was a great book series, and it really, I think, helped me a lot to understand uh, some of the biblical stuff that sometimes you know gets lost in translation when it comes to the complicated wording. You know, where you just read it and think, oh, this is what it's about. But then when it's put into a real-life perspective, mm -hmm. we see, oh, this is actually... And I, again, with a grain of salt, where you're not thinking, oh, this is really what happened. It's, you know, you're thinking just this is just people, a take on it. But yeah. it was really good, and I, I really enjoyed those to, to help me with that. And, and again, a lot of them were very, very interesting, yeah. you know, uh, things that kind of help move the story along where you don't, you know, you kind of, oh, this is how this happened and, and that. So it's really good. And it gives life to, to the people in the Bible that you usually don't see when you just read, you know, what they said for those, you know, one part of the scripture. Like Peter says one sentence at one point, you don't see the whole backstory. What the backstory is, what he is said. What yeah. said, yeah. And so it, it was a really great thing. I didn't yeah. mean to take up the whole time with that oh, no, sponsorship, cool. but... <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's just this, you know, just just really just talking about it and you know we sit here and give our intake about the things in the bible how we you know what if it was because it only it doesn't give it gives us the story that we need to know and know that that's how the word of god is and it's not that we can't be like well i wonder what happened after this or, you know, it's not that we can't do that. This is like the framework. Yes. Uh, and then it's like if you have the scaffolding to a building or all the all the frame part of a building, mm -hmm. if you have two different builders, it's it's what will you put on the outside. If you had two different builders, you use the exact same framework, the house would probably look different. Mm -hmm. From the outside, that's kind of, you know, you're, you're fleshing out different parts that maybe they didn't. Or, you know, because, again, you're starting with, with the framework. And, and building up, and so yeah. everybody has, I think, a different look at how the Bible is to them, yeah. as far as what you get. And first impressions has a lot to do with that. When you see, you know, when you read something, you think, "Oh, this is how it is," and then after that, you you just think about, "Oh, this is what he was feeling like," or you know, yeah. or that. But then you read somebody else's intake exactly. yeah. on it, and it's uh, oh, that's yeah, that's, wait, but yeah, that makes sense that makes too. Sense. And yeah. then, then, for instance, the four gospels. The four Gospels, when we were sitting there studying the different things in the four Gospels, they all had their own intake exactly, on yeah. own the same story. Uh, this, the, sa it was this, the same miracle, the same hit, the same thing, but it was their their own story. How they, but it's all in there, sure. and it all is around. It talks about one thing. If you really look at it, it's all about yes. what Jesus had one of done, it, and it's you know one of it can be reported on. And be told in many different ways, mm -hmm. you know, how it happened based on individual bias, mm -hmm. uh, your perspective, what you actually saw versus what somebody else saw. Yeah, true. And it could be you saw the same thing, but you looked at it from a different angle. Different angle. Know? Yeah. And so that's why they're all mentioned in there. Right. Um, so we really hope you enjoyed our Sunday school this morning. We're jumping all over the place with different um, things and different information that we have. Um, have studied, read, or listened to, and we hope that you know it, it. It helps you also to know more about Christ and to know where He came from. Because a lot of times we really want to know where people come from. Sure. And this is the life of Christ, where it all started with the prophecies, and then we know where it all ended, but where it all began also. Does that make sense? I because so, it yeah. end, where his life ended was just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Where his life ended was just the beginning of what was to come for us. 
So we hope you enjoyed that and um, pray that you will join us for our Sunday morning worship service. Have a wonderful day. 10 minutes to try to turn this thing off. I wish Lady was here.